there's a trash can right here. <laughs> Just like my career on YouTube. I was close, but I still missed. What's going on guys? This is Sam and there is so much news about the new 6.1 inch iPhone coming in 2018. We know a little bit more about the iPhone 10 version two and the new iPhone 10 plus coming in 2018. Apple's working on an iPhone SE 2 They dropped some amazing new advertisements. New MacBook is coming, new iPad is coming. So much to talk about. So let's go ahead and jump in. So first I wanna talk about the new 6.1 inch LCD iPhone that we are expecting to see launch in 2018 alongside two higher end iPhone models a new version of the iPhone 10, like the iPhone 10 or iPhone X2, and an iPhone 10 Plus. Apple's also working on a fourth iPhone model for 2018, the iPhone SE 2. We'll talk about that in just a bit. KGI has reported new information on this 6.1 inch model. They say it's going to have an LCD display. This is something that we sort of heard before, but to keep the cost down, this model is going to be available for seven or $800 instead of $1,000 plus. Apple is opting for the LCD display instead of OLED. The 6.1 one inch iPhone is going to feature a design very similar to the iPhone 10. It's going to have Face ID again. It will not have a home button and it's going to definitely have the notch for the True Depth camera system to enable Face ID in the first place. Some other interesting things to note is that the 6.1 inch iPhone, because it will be cheaper than the $1,000 iPhone 10 and even more expensive iPhone 10 Plus, instead of a steel frame like on the current iPhone 10 models, it's going to have an aluminum frame. This phone is also rumored to not have 3D touch, which definitely feels like a step in the wrong direction. And instead of dual cameras like we see on the iPhone 10, I assume that next year's iPhone 10 or iPhone X2 and the iPhone 10 Plus will continue to use this dual camera setup, but it's rumored that the 6.1 inch cheaper model for only seven or eight hundred dollars will not have dual lenses. It will continue to have a single lens setup like what you find on the iPhone 8 right now. That being said, Apple plans to continue using three gigabytes of RAM in the 6.1 inch phone and the battery life looks to be really good, better than the iPhone 10. The iPhone 10 for reference right now has a 2,716 milliamp hour battery, but this new 6.1 inch model, the cheaper one, is going to have a 2850 to 2950 milliamp hour Hour battery, which is really big. That's 200 plus milliamp hours better than on the iPhone 10 right now if they jump to 2950, which would enable better battery life than we see on the iPhone 10 right now, which is already really good. I, I'm so excited to see Apple focus on battery life rather than just saying, oh, it has about the same battery life as iPhone 10, or we've made some software modifications. That can only go so far, and having a physically bigger battery inside the new iPhone models in 2018 is a really good sign. So as of right now, that's everything that we know about that cheaper LCD model coming in 2018 that will be very similar to how the iPhone 10 looks now, but with some dumbed down features. For the iPhone 10 second generation and the iPhone 10 Plus coming in 2018, KGI is reporting that these devices will have four gigabytes of RAM, which I think will be the highest that we've ever seen in an iPhone. Apple has traditionally been really behind when it comes to RAM, just because iOS is very well optimized to run on a device without a lot of RAM. Right now, the iPhone 10 has three gigabytes of RAM, so that will be an extra gig in the 2018 higher end models. And I can't even fathom how good that's going to be with the A12 chip because the A11 Bionic chip is insane. It's the fastest processor on the market right now for mobile phones. And if Apple continues to refine that and combine it with four gigabytes of RAM, the second generation iPhone 10 and the iPhone 10 Plus are looking to be the fastest phones on the market. For battery life on the higher end 2018 iPhones, we don't know a lot about the regularly sized iPhone 10, but for the iPhone 10 Plus, which is rumored to have up to a 6.5 inch OLED display, rumors have said 6.2, 6.3, or 6.5. And that device could have up to 3,400 milliamp hours. KGI suggests between 3,300 and 3,400 milliamp hours of battery power and juice packed inside, which is going to give the iPhone 10 Plus incredible battery life. It's gonna be tempting for me to upgrade, but I still feel that if Apple goes with 6.5 inches for an OLED panel, it's gonna look incredible, it's gonna be amazing. I'm sure the PPI pixels per inch will be out of this world but that's too big for my hands. And I feel like it would be very uncomfortable, but a lot of people seem to love it. And that's definitely the market that Apple's going for with this device. Continuing on with more iPhone news, the iPhone SE 2 has been again rumored to launch in the first half of this year in either May or June. That is three total sources now, Text24, Economic Daily News, and Trendforce. They have said that an iPhone SE 2 is almost certainly coming from Apple this year. Some have described it as an iPhone SE-like device, and that would be because we've heard that it could have a bigger screen and we've heard that the back could be glass now to enable wireless charging. Another source has come forward to say that it's not just text 24 anymore 
but KGI still says that they do not think Apple will be launching a second generation iPhone SE in 2018. And if you're playing along at home, that means that three sources have said that an iPhone SE 2 is coming. One source has said that an iPhone SE 2 isn't coming. I feel like there's too much smoke for there not to be a fire now. I am very confident at this point that Apple will be releasing a new iPhone SE 2 this year, which I'm so excited for. A lot of people, as I just made reference to earlier myself, don't like big phones. And the iPhone SE 2 is affordable. It's $400. I know that's a lot of money, but compare it to the $1,000 iPhone 10, that is unquestionably affordable. And a lot of people don't like big screens. And they don't mind a cheaper, more dumbed down experience when they just want a really good smartphone without a big screen. And I think that's exactly the market that the iPhone SE is going for. I am so excited that we are almost definitely seeing one. And of course, stay tuned here, subscribe down below for more news on the iPhone SE 2 in the future. One other piece of information that we got on the iPhone SE 2 this week is that it is rumored to not have 3D touch. So it looks like two of the iPhones that Apple releases in 2018, the 6.1 inch model and the new four inch iPhone SE will not have 3D touch, while the iPhone 10 second generation and the iPhone 10 Plus will continue to have 3D Touch. I like 3D Touch, I think it's a cool feature, but at the same time, it's not totally necessary. When I used the original iPhone SE after using the iPhone 6S, I missed it a little bit, but it wasn't make or break for me on the phone. Most Android phones don't even have 3D Touch, it's definitely an Apple exclusive feature, but it's interesting that they're breaking up the product line. I thought that all phones they made in the future would have 3D Touch. That doesn't look like it's gonna be the case anymore. Moving on from iPhone news to a new iPad, Bloomberg initially rumored that a 2018 model would be releasing this year with a bezel-less design, face ID, no home button, very similar to if the iPhone 10 was turned into an iPad. That was a really exciting rumor. A lot of people got excited for it. There were some amazing concept images created. And just recently, website iHelpBR discovered some new code in iOS 11.3 that discovered a bezel-less iPad or a quote-unquote modern iPad is how it was referenced in the code with Face ID is on the way. So iOS 11.3 would probably be the main version of software to launch alongside a new iPad. If Apple is working on one for release in March or April, if they hold an event then, or maybe they hold a new event in May or wait until WWDC, iOS 11.3 is likely to be the firmware to ship with it. So if Apple is testing iOS 11.3 on this device, it's logical that we would start seeing reference to this new iPad in the first developer beta of iOS 11.3 that launched around a week ago. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this iPad down below in the comment section. The iPad is a, a more niche and niche product every year because it used to be for a very broad audience, but now a lot of people just use their computers or just use their phones. And our phones are so good at this point that not everybody needs an iPad. I use it for school. It's great for reading PDFs. I, I don't like staring at a, a flat and like vertical laptop screen. I really like being able to hold it, change my head position, look at it in front of me. And the screen on the 10.5 inch iPad Pro blows everything else that I've ever seen out of the water. It's 120 Hertz. So the refresh rate is twice as good as the iPhone 10, any other iPhone on the market, and most other Android phones. The only other mainstream device that I've heard of with 120 Hertz display, other than of course like gaming monitors, is the Razer phone. And everything looks so smooth and so buttery. That is the number one feature that I want to see come to iPhones this year. We haven't heard any rumors about it. Obviously, I would have brought that up if we heard anything, but uh, I really hope that Apple continues to use that on this bezel-less iPad, because I can't imagine a bezel-less device with Face ID, possibly with a notch on the iPad, with this gorgeous 120 hertz display. It would be incredible, and I'm really excited to see what Apple does with the new iPad in 2018. Moving over to the Mac lineup, Apple has teased that a lot is coming this year. They're working on a new Pro display. They have confirmed 100% without question that a new Mac Pro is on the horizon before the end of this year. They actually teased that back around the middle of 2017. So we're gonna see a new Mac Pro this year. We saw the iMac Pro release in December of 2017. A new rumor from Digitimes, who I would rate like five chickens out of 10, because like sometimes a chicken will lay the egg every single time, but other times a chicken it's just not ready. It likes the egg inside of it. It's not ready to let go yet. It's very attached and no egg ever comes out. iText24 is like one chicken out of 10 right now because they've talked about a lot of eggs that are supposed to be coming, but I only, I've only i seen like one chicken. There's not 10 chickens laying eggs. There's like one chicken. Does this analogy even make sense? Anyway, moving on. Digitime says that a new 13-inch entry-level MacBook is coming in 2018 and Mac Rumors hypothesizes that this could replace the MacBook Air. And I think that would make a lot of sense on a lot of levels because 
the MacBook Air still does not have a retina display, and I see so many people in my university using it, and I just feel bad for their eyes because I think the resolution is like 720p. I don't even think it's 1080, or maybe it's somewhere in between 720 and 1080. My mom uses one. The screen just isn't that great. I would argue that the MacBook Air peaked in 2012 or 2013, and since then, it hasn't seen a lot of usage. I see some people on my campus with the MacBook Air, but I don't see a lot of people. I see so many more MacBooks and MacBook Pros specifically. So I'm excited to see what Apple does with this new 13-inch MacBook. This entry-level model, we don't know a lot about it just yet, but I assume it will continue to be thin like the MacBook line is now. Now, there was some news from Nike earlier today that said that Apple was cutting iPhone 10 output in half from January through March. And I was like, wow, is the model really selling that bad? And then I did a little bit of research and realized I read an article from Apple Insider saying that Nike basically says the same thing every year. Right around this time, near the end of January, middle of January, beginning of February, Nike will publish this report that says iPhone 10 or, or that year's iPhone, iPhone 7, iPhone 6S, it didn't sell well during the holiday quarter. Like Apple is gonna not ship as much. We've talked to industry sources and they say that they are cutting production in half. And, uh, and Apple stock was affected by it today. I don't know if this is gonna be true. For Nike, maybe Apple is cutting down production a little bit. I don't think it's in half because I've seen a lot of iPhone 10s, especially after the holiday season. And for Apple Insider's take, they say no other iPhone analyst has suggested this. Sales seem to be really good during the holiday quarter. And I think when Apple does their financial earnings report, you're going to see that the iPhone 10 actually sold really well. Um, let me know what you think about this down below. Did you not buy the iPhone 10 because of how expensive it was? Do you think that Apple was really cutting production in half between January January and March, it seems pretty hard to believe, but once again, let me know below. The last thing I want to talk about in this video are Apple's two latest Animoji ads. If you have not seen these, I will show a couple screenshots on screen because I don't want to get super hard copyrighted. These are incredible, links below. They feature Animojis singing to Childish Gambino's Redbone off of Awaken My Love and Migos' new single, Stir Fry. Uh, Apple calls it Amigos. These are so well done. At the very end of each video, I was like, wow, the Animojis just look so good. How did Apple do that? These were professionally animated. So technically you probably can't get every single exact facial expression that these Animojis did, but they are incredible. They are the best and most creative Apple ads that I've seen in a long time. Links down below once again. As of right now, that is all the Apple news you should know. I am so hyped for the future of the iPhone, the future of the iPad, the future of the Mac. Lots of good stuff coming from Apple in 2018. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to drop a like down below. That would be incredible. And of course, hit subscribe for more videos like this in the future. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can head over to iAppDataOS.com slash merch, buy a t-shirt or hoodie. That would be amazing. For now, I've been Sam. I hope all of you are doing great, and I will talk to you in my next video.